views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Well, Happy New Year to you and want to let you know straight ahead on this edition of Perspectives, we go front and center with an actress that is literally making headlines. She's an actress, she's a producer, she's a writer, she's got all of that and then some. We'll introduce you to her right after this on Perspectives. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you make a move solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, you speak on your decisions. Cause in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective which shines a light Cause it might make a difference in someone else's life Make a difference What's your Express what's in your heart and your mind Share your perspective What's your perspective And hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Perspectives I am Darren Hyman and of course we invite you to stay connected to us here on Perspectives Want to wish you a happy new year as you are in the year 2018. We're wishing all the best to you. And uh, listen, we want to bring all the best to you here on Perspective. So we invite you to stay connected to us. Check us out on social media. That's BronxNet Perspectives. You can hit us up on Twitter as well as Instagram. And then also my professional page, Darren C. Jaime. You'll find out what is happening on the show as well as get some inspiration to carry you throughout the course of the week. Well, coming up front and center on this edition of Perspectives, we introduce you to a young lady. She's got a creative and inspiring show that tells the story of a young woman that's trying desperately to please everybody around her. And it's the topic of the play called The Closet B. Now, I can't say the word on TV, but you know what the B means, right? Right. It's an 80 minute one woman show. And she's here, she's tell, here to tell us a little bit about the show. She's my she's an actress as well as my dear friend Shauna Solomon and uh, good to have you. Thank you for having me. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Welcome. Thank you. Take some time off the set to come and be on this set. Thank you much. Yes, yes. So give us a little bit about what's going on. I mean, obviously, uh, very busy. Is in addition to the one woman show that we're going to talk about in a little while. You got some work that's going on right now. We can catch you on TV. Yeah, you can catch me on Shades of Blue. Mm -hmm. uh, season three will be premiering early 2018 this year. I'm very, very excited about that. Uh, my role, my character is Karen. Mm -hmm. She's awesome. She's on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, she's like, she's a right hand shooter of like a big drug dealer in Brooklyn and um, she has to choose between the lifestyle that she's always known or being a really good mom mm -hmm. because they're utilizing her son for some for some things that she's not cool with. Mm -hmm. So she's she's changing and I like it. That's good. Season yeah. three Season coming up three. real soon. Mm -hmm. So in addition to that, what else you got going on? Well, I have Search Party. Mm -hmm. That's out on iTunes. I have The Deuce. That's on the HBO. I have Divorce, that's on HBO, and I'm also in The Big Sick with Kumail Nanjani and Ray Romano, and Crown Heights. And Crown Heights is a movie about a young black man who was wrongfully accused in Brooklyn. And he was sent to jail, I believe, for 25 years, mm -hmm. 25 to 27 years, and he had to do that time, and he didn't commit the crime. So yeah. it's crazy, I play a corrections officer who actually believes in him, so I'm very grateful to play a protagonist rather right. than an antagonist, you know what I mean? You seem to have a good. lot of roles. How are you balancing all the different roles that you that you, that you are called to do here? Well, I mean, even though people might see them at the same time, they're not shot all at the same time. They were they mm -hmm. were they were shot shot at different moments through 2016 through 2017. Right. And you just jump in, but before jumping in, you know, I usually create like a really dope character bible mm -hmm. and figure out who this person is, what their relationship to the character is, and each character is, uh, just what their history is. I find out what their accent is. Sometimes mm -hmm. I pick up little things from people on the train or walking in New York City, like mm -hmm. how their eye twitches or how they walk. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna steal that from my character. My character would do that. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I've always been a people watcher in like a non-creepy way, yeah. if that makes sense. Good, good, yeah, <laughs> watch it to get information yeah. to help you to do your work. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So listen, you work with Ray Liotta and Jennifer Lopez. What have you learned from them? 
Ah, oh, Ray is a beast. J Lo's a beast too. I uh, I learned that. I don't, just working with Ray in in a scene that I did last year with him, he was just so giving as an actor. Mm -hmm. He was so there for me. Uh, it was a very intense scene, and I had to pull some mega emotion out. And he did the work. It still stayed true to his character, but he did the work that it took to affect me and my character enough to go there. So I'm so grateful, so grateful for that. So I definitely learned to be giving as an actor. You can't, it's just not about your performance. Like, oh, I am here. Mm -hmm. I am here, put the cameras on my face. You know, it's not, a, it's not, a, it's not about that. We're all in it together and it's about teamwork mm -hmm. and uh, telling the story and making sure the journey of the story is visible and people get it. Those words have to jump off the page onto the screen. So, and people have to be entertained. Right. So it's not just about you, it's about entertaining them as a whole with everyone. So Ray definitely taught me teamwork. And Jayla? Oh, she's just a beast, <laughs> man. She's just, she's focused. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that, that is the biggest lesson I learned from her when she's on set. She's just super, just linear focus, gets the job done, um, super respectable. She's just, she's just awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, as I said in the intro, you know, you got a lot of things going on it's in addition to all these roles that you play. But the main baby, your baby, baby. is this one woman show mm -hmm. that's 80 minutes long. And it's called The Closet B. I cannot say the word, <laughs> but I want you to know there's an acronym. And so before you go there, hear what it's about first and hear what we got to say. Yes, yes. So talk to us about The Closet B because B stands for something. Yes, it stands for a bold individual who thinks confidently of herself. Okay, bold individual who thinks confidently of herself. Do the work, do the math. Go ahead. <laughs> so I wasn't always that. You know, I was timid and... I was uncomfortable around people just to make them uncomfortable. And I didn't even realize that I was doing it until someone told me that I was doing it. Mm -hmm. And my ex said one day, how come, how come you're so bold and you're just so brave and fearless and you say what's on your mind in front of me, but when we're around some of your friends and certain people, it's like you just, you clam up and you get weird and, and all you wanna do is like please them and you become this people pleaser. And so I realized I had this issue. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote out every single event, like major event that's ever happened to me in my life where mm -hmm. I allowed people to make me feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I tried to people please them. And that's what the show was about. It's about facing these people. But after I wrote it and um, I spoke to my ex about it, he said, well, that's, that's exactly what you are. You're a closet bee. And I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, I'm gonna flip the stereotype and I'm mm -hmm. gonna turn it on its head because a lot of people consider women, strong women who are very opinionated, who get things done, who are hard workers and um, you know, they don't play no games. Mm -hmm. They call them bees. And so it's not that. They're just bold individuals who think confidently of themselves right. and they need, they need to walk with their heads high and it's okay to walk with your head high and it's okay to make people uncomfortable uh, as long as you're not hurting anyone but you got to put yourself first mm -hmm. and so the show is about how we learn how to please people from like a young child from our homes and then take that all the way through school through relationships through work uh, and in life just in general and how we can overcome that. And so this is a one woman show, which means you play all the characters yourself. 19. 19 characters yeah. in 80 minutes. In 80 minutes. How yeah. does that work? Well, it's just, I feel like the story has to flow. It's gotta be a quick story, in and out. Uh, people are there, you don't want anybody looking at their phones, getting bored. So you have to have entertaining subjects, it's really relatable. It's about a lot about what goes on here in the Bronx and how I grew up here, mm -hmm. how I went to Manhattan and tried to have this corporate lifestyle and I lost sight of my dreams and got them back and all those experiences, there were so many people involved. And these 19 characters are inserted in each experience. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, but jumping from character to character is, is like my favorite thing in the world. Go we'll come back and talk a little bit more about her jumping from character to character. <laughs> we gotta jump to a break right now, so stay with us. When we come back, we'll have more with Shauna talking about the Closet B and then some more right here on Perspective.
And we're back here on Perspectives. Darren Jaime here with you. We are talking with Shauna Solomon, and she's the actress par excellence who has got several things going on. We were talking about a one-woman show. It's an 80-minute show uh, called The Closet B. And, uh, yes, it is taking place this spring. Yes. Where are we going to find it? At the Workshop Theater. Okay. And they can go online for tickets at shaunasolomon.com. There you go. You hit the website, and then... Uh, you you got the both websites that you'll see uh, throughout the remainder of the show. And so um, you've had the opportunity to do this show. Mm -hmm. What have you gotten out of it since? I know what, what, what caused you to do it, but what have you gotten out of it since doing this? Because you've done this a couple times now. Yeah, it's crazy that you asked that because at first it was about me mm -hmm. and my testimony and sharing it with the world. But this last run, which, which started actually last April and ended in August, I realized it wasn't about me at all. It was about relating to every single person sitting in that seat that's going through the same thing or something similar, like feeling like they can't truly be themselves, mm -hmm. um, like they're just people pleasing and they're shutting a, a portion of themselves out or hiding a piece of themselves just to make other people comfortable. I had a young lady come to the show, I, I won't say her name, but she's a beautiful spirit. Mm -hmm. She came crying to me after the show and saying um, that she's going to come out to her parents. Mm -hmm. And that's not what my show is about in terms of, you know, it's not, like I know it's called The Closet B, but I'm, it, it's not about my, yeah, right, it's right. not about coming out of the closet, but it does relate to that mm -hmm. in some sense. And she did it. Mm -hmm. And her parents are okay with it. Wow. And she cried and cried and said, thank you. If I didn't see your show, I would have never been brave enough to do that. Right. And we're seeing so. pictures of your show right now. And uh, obviously, audiences have the opportunity to watch her uh, coming up this spring and being able to do that and, and hear about your show or see your show. But let me talk to you about this. When you talk about the show itself and being in character, um, obviously, it's a reflection of you. What do you want people to really take away after having the experience of this whole 80 minutes? What do I want them to take away from me? Yeah. I want them to know that I, just like them or many people, have just been afraid to be myself. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I've been choked up, caught up in fear of just, just being free deciding to do what I want to do instead of what maybe what my parents want to do or what society wants me to do. Uh, I, was, I was always afraid of going full force at being an actor because everyone said like, do you know how hard that is? Do you know how, do you know how, how, how much work you're going to have to do and how broke you're going to be? Mm -hmm. I didn't have a system around me saying, go, go, believe in yourself. That's what you want to do. Go be free. Go do it. I had my mom and my dad, but it's, it's different when you step out into, into school and into the environment that you grew up in. Everybody's like working a nine to five and they're like, uh, listen, I'm getting my money. What you getting? You right, know what I mean? Right, right. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I just, I just want to do what I love to do. Mm -hmm. And it's finally paying off. But that's what I, I want people to get. What's the feeling like for you now? Because when I first met you, you weren't doing this full time. Right. And you had another job. And now you have the ability to be this actor, actress that's doing this full time, doing what you love. You got films, you got your one woman show. What's that feeling like for you? It feels amazing. It, it's literally, I always thought that that term, hard work pays off, was some sort of a cliche mm -hmm. understatement. It's not. It's self belief and hard work pays off. I always knew, you know, when you feel something deep down inside, what your purpose is? So if you connect with that purpose and you just, you work at it, you're going to get there. Mm -hmm. And so it feels amazing that it finally paid off. And the biggest payoff is just to give that gift to somebody else. Right. So I just, I'm, I'm proud of myself. Being a woman in, in uh, film and mm -hmm. being a woman in the industry right now, we know a lot of conversations going on about sexual harassment in the industry and, 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 and the whole Harvey Weinstein and a bunch of names that could actually go there. Oh, she's getting there. <laughs> she's getting there. Like she, okay. Who was about to get her? So, uh -huh. so, so talk to us about, first of all, your experience. Has it been uh, an easy experience for you? Do you understand where other women are coming from? 100%. I mean, you walk down the street every day, you experience some form of... Uh, sexual harassment and sometimes it's almost like brushing your teeth you know you it's just a part of your daily activities mm -hmm. and it's sad that 
that it is a part of your daily activities. Um, I haven't experienced that in the entertainment industry. I haven't experienced that at all, mm -hmm. actually. Um, maybe it's because I'm bold. Maybe it's because I'm mouthy. You know, so I don't know. I, I, if I did, I, I think I would say something. You know, straight. I do. I will. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll check it right then and there. Or, I don't know. I don't know. We can always say what we'll do when we're in the situation. Right. When we're not in it. You know. Right. But um, I'm pretty sure you're gonna see it on my face because right. I, I, I wear my feelings and I think I'd say something. I'm really mouthy, so I think I say something. <laughs> Something will come out. Something's going to come out. Do, do, do you feel like the environment has changed or the culture has changed on sets now? 100%. Mm -hmm. Even when you get wired, mm -hmm. like people, like you want to do it yourself, you know, I don't want to touch you. There's somebody on set usually from, you know, to watch the person wiring you, miking you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's, um, yeah, uh, sometimes you could feel like the tiptoe, but I do feel that there's a lot more respect on set. Mm -hmm. I feel. Right. Maybe it's me. Right. And we've got the Me Too movement now. Mm -hmm. And your thoughts, I mean, it's really become a movement. Um, people are really speaking out and, and, and you know, women's or voices are being heard. Yeah, and men too. Like, check out Terry Crews. I thought that was really big of him to say what he had to say. I think um, there are two sides of the coin. I think it's brilliant. I think it's amazing. I think you should come out and say it. Um, what I did learn listening to Terry Crews recently, he said he didn't want to come out initially because he didn't, you know, he didn't, he didn't want to, I don't know if he thought about it or he didn't want to ruin any relationships, but now since seeing other people come out, mm -hmm. it has made him feel like, you know what? Oh yeah, I remember that time and he got PTSD and he, 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 he said to himself, yeah, I need to say something. I need to, I need to let the world know this is not okay. So sometimes when things happen to you immediately, you might be in shell shock or you might not feel the need to say anything or you might be afraid to say something. But it's really great when someone else says something and it makes you comfortable to say something too. So just because someone took their time to say something, it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that it's, that it's wrong or it's BS or, 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 or they're, creating a lie or they should have said something before it just it's their time to say something mm -hmm. so I think it's I, I I was really happy when he said that yeah and it should be respected listen stay with us we got more with Shauna we're gonna take a quick break have more show coming up we'll be right back in just a few stay with us Our guest in studio, Shauna Solomon, talking about the one-woman show, The Closet B, an 80-minute one-woman show that she actually does 19 different characters in 80 minutes in addition to her work in film and television. Do you have a particular uh, like? I mean, you work in TV, film, you got your one-woman show. Is there anything that you like better than the other? Theater is absolutely hands down it's my first love and I think I I don't know if I I don't want to say I like it better mm -hmm. but there's something magical that happens when you're on stage and you get immediate reactions from the audience whether it's laugh cries or <gasps> you know what I mean right. it's it's just so visceral it's so juicy and it's there's nothing like it because you have to do the work in order to get those responses and it's just like yeah I did the work man they get me you know yeah. Well, how does it feel, first of all, being that award-winning actor? And talk about some of the work that you've done. You had TV roles at Law & Order, SVU, uh, Ed Burns, Public Morals, 
Um, you know, you've been around for a minute. I have. Yeah. I have. It's almost 12 years. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, Law and Order was amazing. Like every New York actor was like, I gotta get out of here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when I did that, I was super, super excited. And working with Ice T and Marishka was absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. He's a trip. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. loved him. I love, love, love <laughs> working with him. He was on point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and Public Morals, that was actually one of my first uh, time piece mm -hmm. uh, television shows that I've ever worked on. So it was amazing to go back into the 60s and like live out Steven Spielberg and Ed Burns' vision of what that was in New York City. And mm -hmm. that was fun. You talk about people watching, but talk to us about who else you watched in the industry to help to shape and mold who you are today. Oh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Don Cheadle, Viola Davis, mm -hmm. uh, Denzel Washington, Daniel Day-Lewis. Those are, those, are, those are the meaty actors that I watch. Mm -hmm. Anything that they have, I'm studying. Right. Studying. 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 Uh, yeah. So let me ask the question. So when you go to the movies, do you go to the movies and enjoy the movie, or do you go to the movies and study? It depends. Really? It really all depends. It depends on what jumps out more. I think it, it's moment to moment. Mm -hmm. I could go there for the story, for the journey, and then as soon as something happens maybe with Viola or with Daniel Day-Lewis, I, I notice that they're... They're just, that they're giving it to, to us, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? That the, the juice is coming, and I'm like, oh my God, yes, yes, <laughs> it's coming. It's, yeah, it's coming, yeah. and I'm just, I'm, I'm all there for it. Mm -hmm. But I'll try my best to enjoy it, but it's hard to not, it, it's, it's hard not to eat it up, and yeah. it's hard not to watch the work, you know? You work with a lot of amazing people. I know you always get the question, but is there anybody in particular that you really have a desire that you really want to work with? Don Cheadle. Really? Why, why Don? I think he is incredibly talented. Mm -hmm. I think his acting, I don't see his acting. You know, I don't mm -hmm. see it, meaning he becomes the character. The character is him. He is connected to the character. He's so natural. He's super natural, mm -hmm. and I would love to learn from him. Mm -hmm. um, he's a beast. He's done some of my favorite movies. He's played in some of my favorite roles. Not that I would play them, but I, I enjoy watching them. Mm -hmm. I respect his work, his work ethic. Yeah, I would love to work with him. Speaking of work and work ethic, before we get out of here, I want you to give some advice to some young people out there watching, because, you know, we do get some young viewers that watch. Uh, they see you, and they say, okay, wow, I've seen her accomplishments. I see where she is. But like I said, we've known you for years. It's been a journey. But what advice do you give people? I, something I didn't do, which is because I didn't know about it, but I would go to a college for acting. Mm -hmm. I would go to NYU Tisch, mm -hmm. or I would go to Juilliard. I would try that first. If you don't take that route, as soon as you can, get to a drama school, a conservatory, some mm -hmm. sort of conservatory, and study for at least four years. Just get that in your bones. See if you love it. See if you, you, you really connect with the work. And I, I think the big one thing that really helped me was getting on the NBC showcase. Mm -hmm. So constantly audition and Honestly, I, I love to help people. So if you go on my website and you, you, you hit me up mm -hmm. and you contact me, I will, I will talk to you. I will help you. Yeah. I'm not weird like that. Right, right, you right, know? right, 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 right. I'm cool. <laughs> I'll help you. I'll, I'll help you because there's for you. so much information that I can give them. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely do a showcase so that agents can see you and so that talent managers and, and different uh, casting directors can see your work mm -hmm. and want to work with you. A showcase in New York City is like one of the best things that you can do to start out. Mm -hmm. So if you want to watch Shauna, check it out. She will be uh, performing The Closet B and that will be taking place starting in the spring. Yes. And tell them again where it's going to be at. It's going to be at the Workshop Theater. Okay, at the Workshop Theater. Make sure that you make your way out to the Workshop Theater. You can check her out and find out all the great work that she's doing there. An 80-minute show where she goes through 19 different characters, and uh, it is something worth seeing. Talk to me about the reviews, because obviously, are you, are you critically, because I, I hate watching myself on television, right? Right, right. So talk to me about the reviews, and how do you feel after the show? I mean, is it like, do you go back, and are you extremely critical? Or are you like, okay, how do you, how, do you, how do you feel about your work like that? I do love my work, but I'm still extremely critical. Right. Extremely. Mm -hmm. Like, I could always fix this, 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 and that. Um, and then all you can do is just rehearse your butt off and go let it go on stage. You know what I mean? You just give them your heart, your soul, your all. So that's all I can do every single night. Right. You know? Right. Um, 
but in terms of what people are saying about it, they say it gives them life, uh, it changed them, it brought families together. Uh, the show is not just for women, but my demographic, it's, it's mm -hmm. mostly women. Right. I'm, I love, love, love building women and helping them grow and helping them to become better because I went through it, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, Shauna Solomon, our guest in studio, thank you for coming and hanging out with us here on Perspectives. Thank you for having me. Oh, glad to have you. All righty, listen. And you can find out more about her work. You saw her websites at the bottom of the screen, and we encourage you, of all, as always, to go check it out, and you can find out, and then go check out the One Woman Show, and you definitely, definitely, definitely will come away with a different perspective. Listen, that's about all the time we have here for this show. I want to thank you for watching. Be sure to check us out every week here on BronxNet Perspectives. Until the next time we meet, stay safe, share your perspective. Darren Hyman saying take care. God bless and we'll talk to you soon. What's on your mind? Let them know. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? Let Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you're making moves solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, just speak on your decisions. Cause in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective with Shines of Light. Cause it might make a difference. <laughs>